Good afternoon, everybody. How are we all? I'm back. And looking forward to creating a couple of scrapbook layouts. Just bear with me a minute while I get everything up on screen here in front of me. So that I can make sure that my everything is lined up. Hey, Belinda and Tina. All right. It is raining outside. Um, actually, just bear with me. Make sure I'm just going to take it out of the holster for a second and make sure I've got the right Wi-Fi on. Just bear with me, guys. Sorry. Yes. And now I need something to wedge in there. All right. Okay, thank you for your patience there. I have decided to do a couple of um, scrapbook pages today. Oh, um, the plan is to do two, maybe three pages, but I thought that, uh, well, to see how I go for time, and I've got an idea in my head uh, using the Distress Oxides, which is why, uh, which is the special of the day, um, the daily deal on nataliemay.com.au. And I want to use some art foamies and some of the Scrap Effects foam stamps. So um, I'm just going to get that out of the way because you really don't need to be able to see my iPad because that's just awkward. There we go. Got a bit more room now in front of me. Okay, so we're going to be using the Distress Oxides again. And um, this weekend over the Great Australian Craft Show, uh, I'm playing with lots of different techniques and lots of different ideas and uh, doing a few demos here and there. Um, the cards that I created earlier, I posted up so you could see that there was some that they worked out really quite nicely and despite my slight hangover, they looked very cool. <laughs> um, so what we are going to do is I'm going to play with Distress, ox distress Oxides in a different way where we're going to be smushing them onto a page. Um, so what I have got here in the background is Marshmallow cardstock. So this is a more heavier weight cardstock that is more of a mixed media style um it takes liquid beautifully it is a much much heavier paper uh, i sell this stuff for two dollars a sheet it is not the cheapest paper in the world i can tell you but it um it does what it needs to do and it is really good uh, i do love that paper so the other thing we are going to do is um i have masked off with a piece of paper, half of the page, a little bit on this side and maybe an inch on this side, because I am messy for no other reason than I'm messy. Um, this here is the removable tape. Uh, this is the iBond tape, I think it's called, and I have this available online. The one I have online is actually a wider tape, um, which I probably could have done with today. So, um, but that's all right. And I have some acetate sheets and we're going to be, oh God, hang on. Oh, you've got a glass of wine watching. I did think about it, but I suspect it might've just popped me over the limit again. So let's not do that. Um, okay, so I've got a piece of just a clear acetate piece uh, out of my bag of scraps and I'm going to be adding the ink straight onto here. Then I'm going to be spraying it with water and smushing it down on here to create my background first of all. So I want to use the art foamies um, to go over the top after. So the colours that I'm going to start with are 
I've pulled them out here to have a bit of a look at so you can see how the labels work, which is which is cool. Um, I'm going to go with a range of paler colours. So I'm going to go with Bundled Sage, Twisted Citron, Peeled Paint, and I might pop some yellow in there as well for good measure. And I'll just do that. All right. So I mentioned in my previous videos, these little stickers um, on the side here, they are available. You can print those off on the like from the Ranger website. So they're very cool. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do is go straight onto the acetate like that. Then pick it up, give it a spray with some fancy Adelaide water, and then get it on to my page. So what I'm actually doing is by masking it off, I'm only getting color on this side of my project. Um, so that one was shabby shutters. And in between, I'm just gonna take off any excess by wrapping my paper towel around it. Now I've got Twisted Citron, so this is a much brighter green. Straight on like that. Bit of water. Gosh, here we go. So this is not a new technique at all. This is something that has been around for a really, really long time and it creates a fantastic watercolor effect. And I really love this. I think it looks really clever. Um, and when it dries, it looks great. So, and it doesn't take much time, which is why I thought I could pump out three layouts today. Cause you know, that's how I roll. Total overachiever. So this one is peeled paint. So it's a different shade of green. This is a more yellow based. And what's happening is actually drying quite quickly here on the page rather than um, soaking in, which is, which is good. It's evaporating quite nicely. And I think it needs a bit of depth. So I might actually pull out one of those deeper greens, so perhaps Cracks Pistachio. Ooh, okay. This might not work, but let's commit to it. I forgot what color that one looked like. So, I'm going to go in with the less is best option and I'm going to work around the edges with this color just because actually that worked okay because I wasn't too sure how it was going to look I can drag my acetate okay it's working well I'll be damned alrighty and just roll off that excess so I've got a paintbrush here and um, I thought what I might do is just grab it and just smush it around a little bit. Just take it right to that edge, fill up any little spots um, on the side. I might even pick up a little excess off the mat here. So just a wet paintbrush into here just to fill these, these gaps and give it that real watery sort of look. So, how's everybody's afternoon going? Anyone doing anything exciting? Hello, Vicky. I see you watching there. So I'm just gonna smush that over the top to give it that same consistent look that everything else has. You're camping, Vicky. Oh, so you're watching while you're camping. Now that's pretty cool. 
All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, um, what I think I need to be doing next is I'm just gonna pop that side to dry for 10 minutes. Um, but before I do that, I might give it a few, a few splatters. So the way that I splatter, I've got some ink here. I'm going to make a puddle. I'm gonna mix a couple of greens together. And I'm just going to tap my finger on here. And this is where having the over um, masking the page off has its advantages because now I know that I'm not going to get any extra on my other page, on the other side of my page, and it's going to stay nice and crisp and white, hopefully. Fingers crossed. All right. Beautiful. Baby wipe, wipe that off. And pop that aside somewhere to dry. So I'm just gonna bring that up to the camera so you can see what I'm looking at. So just a couple of nice shades of green together and then I'll be stamping over the top of that later. All right. So clean off my acetate. And do another one. So what I thought this time I would do is I've got this paper rose, sorry about the reflection, there we go, this paper rose panel die. Um, I love these. This one is called the Poppy Decorative Background, uh, $26.95, and they are just gorgeous. So what I have done is I have pre-cut three panels just out of the plain uh, Kaisercraft cardstock, nothing exciting. I ran it straight through my Gemini machine. And what I want to do, what my thoughts are, is that I would stick them down here like that, but I'm actually gonna cut off these top panels. So I wanna put something, I wanna put color down here that's gonna stand out and look nice. Uh, so let's go with something bold and pretty. I might start off with yellow. And build up my color from there. So this is squeezed lemonade. Now, if any of the colors of the oxides have sold out, um, I am getting some more in. I've got a couple of orders on the way. Um, so keep an eye out online for new shipments. Um, they're quite inexpensive anyway, although they are on special today. The um, Normally they're $10.50, I think. So having them, um, I mean, and that's not a massively huge price. Um, so I do think that... Oh, I should have another order in very soon. All right, let's crack out the Crackling Campfire, which is the new Tim Holtz colour. So this one has got more of an orange base to it. So let's go with that. And that shows how beautiful that colour is. Look at that. And I'm just smushing it on. Smush, smush, there we go. Quite like that too. And I want something now with a bit more depth to it. So I'm thinking maybe Festive Berries has got more of a pink base. Abandoned Coral is more... Let's have a look at the colours I've got here. Candied Apple might be quite nice with some barn door. Festive Berries is quite pink and then I've got picked raspberry also there. So let's, I don't, I don't want to add too much pink to this. I want to go stick more red based because the die cuts are poppies. Red. 
Oh, nice. So definitely the trick is putting on the right amount of water. If you don't have enough water on, all you really get is the stamped block look on your page. Um, if you're going for this watercolour effect, then ideally you need to add water to it. So the water is going to help you. So just give it a, a light spray. Make sure that you can see that it's puddled on there. And then smush it on. So it has just started raining here in Adelaide and it is a drizzle. And do you know why it's raining? Because we just hung clothes on the line. Is that just a thing or what? Standard. All right, so now I'm gonna use Barn Door. So Barn Door is a bit of a deeper red. But the, it's going a little bit more, because it's an oxide, it's got that um, oxidization process. So spraying it activates that. And it, oh, yep, that's nice. Um, and it, um, and the color will change as we add the water. So, all right. So what I want to do now is go back with my paintbrush and just lightly fill in any little spots. I want to also add a little bit more yellow. So I think I might use, uh, make up a little puddle here of the squeeze lemonade that I can dip into. because the squeeze lemonade was the color that I popped down first, it's kind of disappeared into the background a little. So I'm just reading through some of the comments as I'm doing this and I can see there's a couple of you who are having a bit of a scrappy afternoon creating, which is great. I would love to see what you guys are creating. Um, one of the downsides of having a online store is that I don't actually get to see what everybody creates. I might sell you the things, but I don't know what you're making with them. All right, so you can see those colors sitting there. Um, I wanna give it a few splats now and I'm going to grab a new color to do that. I wanna grab that, um, what is that? That festive berries. Um, so a couple of the ladies asked in the last class what, uh, when I was doing the cards, what colors to use to build up your collection. Um, look, I think that as you build up your collection, Depends on what sort of projects that you like to create. If you create something that's more masculine and you're, you're drawn to more masculine colors, then of course you wanna go with browns and blues and greens. If you'd like to make things that are a little bit more feminine, of course you wanna go with um, pinks and oranges and reds. Um, but if you can't decide what colors to go with, go with what just pretty things to start with and then just start building up your collection. Um, I highly recommend purchasing a re-inker at the same time because these oxides like to stay juicy. All right, so this one I'm gonna do as a horizontal. I have a bit of an um, idea in my head what I want to do with this one. And I think I wanna put down more of a blue base with this one. So I've got my piece of acetate. Let's get these out of the way before I do anything else. Okay. 
And this time I will go with Peacock Feathers, Salty Ocean, Mermaid Lagoon, Might pop some Twisted Citron in there as well. All right, let's start with Salty Ocean because it's in front of me. There we go. Love that colour. So the water is going to do the work, okay? So don't forget that. So a dry stamp onto here isn't going to do very much at all. Gorgeous colour. So next one is Peacock Feathers. So you can see that it's quite, I know, sorry about the, the lighting glare there, but you can see that it's quite drippy. So again, for those of you who have just tuned into watching, um, the purple lines there, what you can see is I have masked off the rest of my card to keep it white and I'm only oh no got the fingernail marks <gasps> okay hot tip don't rub your fingernail marks fingers on it shit um all right moving on um so yes I have masked it off to keep the rest of my layout white um and I'll take that off in a moment oh that blah bugger 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 all right no We'll just commit to it. So here's the good thing about live Facebook, good for you, is that you get to see me stuff up and see how we fix it. Because that's a thing today. Oh, look, it is Chrissy. It's extremely annoying, but you know what? Let's see what happens, see what I can do with it. Um, and it's an automatic thing just to run my fingernails across it, but, oh well. Okay, let's give it some depth then. In fact, I might just heat set it and add another colour over the top. Alrighty, that'll do. And let's go with... Picked raspberry, so I'm going to clean my acetate. Picked raspberry, straight on. Gave it a good swipe. Give it a spray. So where I have stuffed this up, what I want to do is take the focus away from it. So let's do this by adding another colour. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Twisted Citroen. I'll do that in a sec. So Twisted Citroen's a lovely colour. It's that really bright green. Um, yeah, I like that. Okay, wiping off my acetate again and I'm just going to hit that with the heat tool just to make sure, because if I was to add the Twisted Citroen on it next, what will happen is the pink and the green, because they are opposite on the colour wheel, they're going to muddy up. But I don't want that to happen, so I'm just going to take that puddle there off a little. Twisted Citroen, here we go, Gail. This is all for you. Let's see what happens there. Beautiful, bright, bright green. You just learned something. What did you learn? I missed that. What did I say that, that was interesting to you, Gail? What didn't you know yesterday? Sorry, there's a 20 second delay, so <laughs> I can see your comments. Um, 
but oh there we go pick that up take that over there oh, opposite on the color wheel okay so um yeah this is something that i bang on about a fair bit um if a color while we are talking wet elements if it is if a color is wet and it is opposite on the color wheel what happens when we mix it together is that they make brown so purple and yellow will make brown um, blue and orange when you mix them together will make brown the although they complement each other and look fantastic when they're dry like these two colors together look great when they're dry but when they are wet they make a lovely shade of brown because they are opposites on the color wheel so we generally want to steer away from using those colors um so when you're using paints together same thing stay away from uh colors that are opposite on the color wheel otherwise you will make something that is not visually pleasing um so what i want to do now i've just put some fossilized amber down on my mat and i'm going to activate that um i've got my paintbrush and i want to add some splatters and some little highlights and pops of color up on these edges here down here a little fill in those gaps i'm gonna to have to put my photo there because that's really just giving me the shits um sorry the irks <laughs> um and i'm going to pop that aside to dry all right, so now I can go back to my first layout because I'm doing three layouts because that's like a massive overachiever thing. So before I do anything here, I just want to have a bit of a look. I'm going to bring it up to the camera and show you because it has dried up looking really, really lovely. And now I want to stamp over the top. So the art foamies are fantastic. Art foamies are a thick foam stamp i've had them in stock for i think i've been a stockist of art foamies for about four years quite a while um i have got a good range of art foamies uh, foam stamps from art by marlene through to all sorts of different designers what i like about these is that they wash clean you can use them with paint you can use a brayer and roll the paint on so if i was using paint with these guys I would put the paint down on my mat, use a, a roller or something, smoosh it out, stamp it into that, then stamp it onto my page. But what I decide to do today is I'm going to stamp onto it with, I'm going to add ink to it with the um, oxides. So um, again, I haven't done this before. It's a really good idea in my head because you know that's how I roll um, and I thought stuff it or give it a whirl um, now the art foamies are not included in the sale because I have already heavily discounted them anyway so that is good for you they are already three to four dollars under recommended retail price so um, you will find them on the website and um, you'll see that they're already marked down so what i want to do now is i have got a few different shades here of blues and greens and i'm going to put the color on so i'm going to pop some chip sapphire on first um like i said i haven't done this before so i am just gonna wing it like how bad can it go seriously <laughs> says me who just stuffed up the last layout so i'm just applying it like that now it is muddying up my ink pad but that's okay because i'm just going to give it a wipe and clean that off uh then i'm just going to pop some of this one on so that's also working i could probably also do it this way and pick it up off the mat Let's try that. 
Like I said, haven't done it. It was a great idea. Figured I'd give it a go. No, don't want to do it that way. Don't like it. All right. Just taking off that excess there. And now I'm going to stamp into this. So this is a really lovely botanical design. Do we go that way? Yeah, let's just commit to it, hey? I'm giving it a decent amount of elbow grease here. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, that was a little bit overexcited of me, wasn't it? Heck yeah. So I want to pop another one there. I like it. All right, how do you clean it? Well, let me show you that first. Yeah, baby. All right, how do we clean it? Um, I will go and put it in the sink and just use my um, scrubbing brush to take off that excess ink. It is that easy. Um, so I will do that after filming. I'll throw that over there for now. And yeah, look at that. That's looking great. Pop my lids back on, I'll clean those later. Actually, I'll just peel my um, mask off so you can see the whole overall effect here. And that's the base for my layout. I like it. All right, let's do... Let's go back to this hot mess because I want to use the Scrap FX foam stamps. So these little guys are super cute. Um, and... I just need to dry off that layout first. What brand is the base cardstock? So the base cardstock that I'm using is marshmallow cardstock. It's the good stuff. It is $2 a sheet. It is um, ridiculously expensive. You will find it online under cardstock on nataliemay.com.au. Um, but it is, it's really, really nice to use. And it's a really nice heavy weight. Um, I haven't gessoed or anything like that. I'm going straight down with colour and water. And other than the little furfy that I had here, um, it is it reacts beautifully. So that's my bad because I ran my fingernails over it. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to use these foam stamps. So there's quite a few foam stamps in store um, online and they are also 15% off this weekend. Uh, I got a shipment in yesterday that I uploaded straight away. Um, and I don't have this little number, but I have the big size available. I just didn't want to open yet another product off the shelf, which is really really hard but I love that they're already on an acrylic base as well so I'm just stamping it on there um, like so it 
And I'm doing it in this picked raspberry to pick up that pink that's sitting really nicely in the background. Um, so I'll do the same thing again. I'm just going to apply the ink first to the stamp. So there, yeah, there's quite a quite a nice little range of uh, these at the moment. You'll find them on the website under Scrap Effects in the sidebar. And I'm just overlapping those a bit. Not adding any more ink at this stage because there's still ink on there. But I can just tap my ink pad lightly. Like that. And I like it. And knowing when to stop is important. So same way again, just wipe those off with baby wipe, nice and gentle. They are quite delicate. You do have to be a bit more gentle with them. All right. So now I will take the mask off where I have masked down with the purple tape. Oh, yeah. And bring that up to camera. I like that one too. All right, let's pop that baby aside and go to the last one. Okay, let's have a look here. So this is dried up well. And I've got these guys that I'm going to stick down as well. So these are the die cuts from the Paper Rose um, die, the panel die. And I don't want to add anything else to this. I'm just going to take off this excess water. Uh, by rolling my paper towel over it. Take off the mask on the side, nice and gently. Oh, and I haven't cut the barcode off here. I was too lazy to do that today. I'll do that after the layout's complete. So this tape is really handy as well for masking, for sticking down, like for holding down dies when you put it through your die cutting machine. Um, it's quite inexpensive. The one that I, I mentioned earlier, the one I've got in stock is a bit thicker. Uh, it's sold out of the, the skinny one, but you get the idea so yeah i love that that's i've got one little mark there i don't know how i did that i think that might have just been on my fingers as a bit of transfer um but i will cover that up so this dye has just been done with with on Kaisercraft cardstock quite inexpensive um i'm going to cut off the bottom element and trim it back a little oh that's nice now it's not going to join up because it's it's not a joining up joining up die if that's a thing. Um, but I'm not that worried about it. I'm still going to trim it off and I'll just cover up that join. Let's round that off to there. But it is such a beautiful die and it cut first time absolutely perfect in my machine. I was so impressed. Um, it, I do love that. And most of you know that I worked, I've been working with Paper Rose for a while. Um, 
worked with them all last year doing the shows around Australia. And most of you know that I love, love their products. Um, have designed my own stamps and papers as well through Paper Rose and totally believe in their, their product, their Australian product. So um, my lovely friend Kasha is one of the designers for Paper Rose and she has is you know bring brought a fantastic light um a, a fantastic new look towards um to the company and, and the way that they're moving forward and i love that so um mm -mm -mm. so you will find paper rose 12 by 12 papers that they've just released available online and they have just um they're 15 percent off as well at the moment um, okay, so I need to stick this down next. So I'm just going to commit to it and I'm just going to whack some glue on. And if I fluff around with it anymore, it's just, I'll be doing this for bloody hours. So um, I've just got my puzzle glue with the fine nozzle. This is the one that I bang on about all the time. I bought this in from Poland and I love this. So what I'm going to do is follow that line like that I'm not worried about putting glue in the middle I'm happy that it's got a bit of oomph to it a little bit of connection or that it's not totally connecting I need to overlap that a little and I might have to trim that down oh no that's all right that'll be fine Okay, so what's happening? Oh, actually, I'll stick this bottom bit and then I'll come back. Bugger. And I know that I don't have to put all the way down because I've only got a couple of inches down the bottom here. Okay, sorry, I should be talking but I'm concentrating and uh, doing both is not my strong point today. Um, but that's okay. Snipping that off. Snipping, shit, that off. And now, it's stuck to my fingernail. Now I'm just gonna trim off these little guys Trim that off up there because it's floating. Round this one here off. That'll work, that'll work. That's fine. And do the same thing up here. That doesn't need to be attached to anything. That's not attached to anything. Man, that kind of works for me. All right except for that. So now I just want to put a little bit of glue on my finger and these bits that are floating up, I'm going to whack that down there. And I know that one was there, so I can do the same. And now I have a beautiful decorative panel. And ready for a photo. So when I stick a photo on, It'll go, here's my pretend photo, about here, um, or here, 
No, it'll probably go like that. I'll find a horizontal photograph. Um, and I can add a few little, you know, decorative elements. I'll match my photograph. I will finish this layout, but I don't need to do it on camera. You guys don't need to see that. So there is that panel for that one complete. Now, let's do this one. I know exactly what I want to do here. I have got the Happy Houses back in stock. So, the Happy Houses are the rice paper Happy Houses. I did an art journal page with them uh, during the last online craft show. I got 30 sheets of it in yesterday. Ready, set, go. They are $3 a sheet and they are so very awesome. There's the little mini happy houses, which is what these ones here are. And then they are also available in the larger size. So what I love about these is that they just go on beautifully as fantastic little embellishments. They are really, really easy to use. And they have been designed uh, by Scrap Effects, of course, which is an Australian company. And I do believe that these little happy houses are the artwork of the absolutely awesome Michelle Logan. Um, and if I am wrong, I apologize. I haven't got the packaging here in front of me, um, but they do look like Michelle's work. And I, I am just on this, um, I just love that their products are super versatile. They are designed by creative people, same as the stamps, designed by creative people for creative people. So they are a great product that is... On, on, right on the market, right on the money. Um, and I think that that's important. You, if you know what your market is, which is us, us crafty people, then designing smart products that, you know, that we know are going to work, bam, perfect. Um, all right, so just trimming around these little guys. Um, when you get a sheet of these, there's a lot more on it. This is left over out of my little personal stash. Like I said, I try not to open um, new ones every single, new packaging, <laughs> new items off the shelf every single time I want to do a demo. I try and use what I've got here. Um, like with the, with the foam stamps I was using earlier, the art foamies, there is the most amazingly beautiful peacock feather. Uh, that is in there in the collection and that's available online as well but I, I can just imagine how awesome that would be if you use the blues and greens of the oxides and stamped with that doing this technique that would be really really cool I think I need this little one sorry guys I should have cut these up before How am I going for time? Ah, oh, plenty of time. I've got nowhere to be. Nowhere to be. Trevor's inside watching the football. Uh, the port game's on. And I will be watching that very shortly. Um, Jessica is out with Max. No idea what they're doing. I'm hoping that they're doing their homework. If they are both watching because they have homework to do um, all right so they have all been cut out but before I do that I need to give it I need to give my background some black elements to it because these this has got a black line the ha on the little houses so I need to draw I've just got my fine super fine pilot pen here and I'm just drawing a very, very thin line just on that edge, almost inside that edge. And I'm not fussed about it being straight. I want it arty. I don't want it perfect. In fact, I'm going to do a little squiggly 
on it as well and do the same thing across the bottom like that like that oh. all right and now I can stick these on now I'm actually just thinking I probably should have backed them in white so that they stood out a little bit more um, what do we think people Help me out here. If they're on white, they're a bit stronger. Yeah, Mel, I think I agree with you, mate. I know what I'll do. That big one will go. Actually, where's my photo going to go? That's important. I forgot about the photo. Yeah, see, Gail, I like them looking a bit transparent as well, but I think they do need to be backed in white. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'll do that on camera because that's a fiddly job. Um, I've just, sorry, off camera here, I'm just cutting my photo mat. Um, the photo that I would use for this would probably be something like a, a 4x4. Um, when I talked about scrapbooking before and how I scrapbook, I'm not into scrapbooking every event of my life. Ain't nobody got time for that. But I do... I do think that it is important to scrapbook and I think it's important to tell your story. Um, so I scrapbook my favourite photographs. I scrapbook the favourite things that are going on in my life and then I tell the story that evokes the emotion behind, behind that. Um, so that is my scrapbooking. I always use a photograph of something that is relevant to me. You will never see me use a photo printed off of Pinterest or Google or whatever. That defeats the purpose of doing this, in my opinion. Um, and I know a lot of creative people do that and I can understand their reasons um, but for me it's about I'm gonna do this the cheats way um, for me it's about telling a story evoking an emotion um, an emotional response and ex explaining what the photo means to me because that's what I'm doing this for it's I'm creating memories for me for when I'm old and decrepit and can't remember what I did last week, which is, you know, kind of me at the moment. Um, but journaling is important. Writing down all of the um, important things in your life, that's important. And the journaling goes on your scrapbook pages. If you don't want to put it on your scrapbook pages, put it on the back of your scrapbook pages. Put it somewhere so that you know who's in those photos, where they were taken, what it's all about. There is nothing worse than picking something up in X amount of years' time and going, oh, who's in that photo? Um, I hate the thought of that. I quite, uh, I've been working with a group of Year 7s um, at Brighton Primary School here in Adelaide for going on probably four years and teaching them about scrapbooking and um, explaining to, you know, they're, they're scrapbooking their school life. So the whole thinking behind that is 
teaching them how to create, how to um, tell their story and record their memories. And I was explaining to them not all that long ago that how important it is to do that because when you get to a certain age, your memory starts to hit the brakes and you, you want that stuff written down. Um, I, I wish I could remember my, um, my school teacher's name, all of my teacher's names um, through, through primary school. They, they had a, a big influence on my life. I had one teacher that I remember her name in Port Lincoln, um, but the rest of them I just don't recall their names. And I wish I had that, you know, a little album of memories, of photos, of things, you know, school camps that I went on and those sorts of things. So that's what I've been teaching these year seven kids um, and explaining to them that, you know, your memory's not going to be there forever. Um, we've got this running joke in my family that before I, before I lost, before I had chemo, everything that happened before chemo uh, has been wiped from my hard drive. Um, I seem to think that the chemotherapy took a big chunk of my memory and anyone who has had chemo might agree with me it takes a bit of a hit on your um, on your memory and on your brain cells so um, I do yeah Trevor will quite often have a bit of a laugh and go oh yeah so you don't remember that that was pre chemo um, so he doesn't even bother asking me about certain things like you know what happened when we were 22 because I've got no flame an idea at all so um hello denise i just saw that you tuned in my love how are you i am making a hot little mess here and we just had this last minute little idea to back these houses with white to get them to stand out a bit so while i'm waffling on that's what i'm doing so, um, so yeah, so record your memories with your photos, scrapbook yourself, tell your own story so that, I mean, hey, who can tell your own story better than you? I don't want to, um, I don't want my story left to somebody else to write unless they can make up some really, really good shit. Sorry, stuff. Um, just going through my bin to find some more white card I can use this one um, so yes tell your own story um, Melissa Kennedy from unmistakable Australian scrapbook cruises unmistakable creations is currently has an online group slash class where she is doing a, a tell your own story sort of subscription club where each month you've got prompts and you've got ideas and things like that. Um, highly recommend joining in on that. I think that's a fantastic thing to do. Um, the scrapbook store that I taught at some years ago, I ran a class for about three years called Book of Me where we all, t um, we all told our own stories. So it's a really important thing for you to do. Take your selfies Take photos of yourself. Use your camera. You don't look like an idiot because if you take the photos on a good hair day and you're standing in front of the mirror in your bathroom and you're in there by yourself, nobody's going to see you taking a selfie. For goodness sake, if a freaking Kardashian can do it, anybody can do it. Let's be honest. Um... All right, so everybody can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm building my houses. Right, that one's going to go there. I do like this one. I think this one needs to go here. But that one is the same as that one. 
So I need to get rid of that. This guy is more pink. So we can go there. That one can go there. And that one can go there. All right, I'm happy with that. Then we've just got this excess two, so they can stay there. Um, oh, look, there's still people tuning in while I'm waffling away. I thought I was here by myself. Sorry, guys. That happens a bit. Oh, I like that. I'll do this one next. So instead of using foam tape, um, I'm doing my little bit for the environment <laughs> and using cardboard boxes because cardboard boxes are something that I have an excess amount of at the moment. So I cut up cardboard boxes and pop, build up little layers in underneath to, um, instead of foam tape. So that is what works for me. Now I'm not making these all the same height. I'm making them making them different heights so that they look yeah I like that so that they look good all right let's bring that up to camera now yes you can see those white bits through there but it doesn't actually look like that when it's not that well lit up um all righty Happy with that. Uh, I'm going to use the new Vicky Booten Storyteller Alphas, the title bits to go on, uh, on my page as words because I freaking love these. These are just divine. Um, so for those of you who may or may not have noticed, the... Uh, available on my website at the moment, you will find you will find a sorry, hang on I'm trying to work out what word I want um, lovely you will find the option to purchase a kit by Vicky Booten. So what that is, is for those of you who don't know Vicky, she is a absolute champ. Um, she is a Canadian lady who are creative, who I have taught with in New Zealand, who I have been friends with for a while. Um, she's an absolute champion. She makes these incredibly awesome kits. Um, and sells them and and is currently doing an online or is about to be doing an online class featuring her new storyteller collection now i approached her and and said to her straight away i would like the australian ladies to be able to access your kits to do the class because they were only going to be available to Canada and to Canada and America. Um, so what happens is a hundred and sixty dollar kit to create a mini album, and then um, you do have to also purchase the class element, um, which won't happen just yet, but it will when it's available. Um, and yeah, the, and that's like $44, I think, Australian. But yeah, the, it's an incredible kit. And to do a class with Vicky Booten that would normally cost you, um, maybe four to $500 for a low cost of only, um, about 200 is an absolute bargain. So, um, I have five kits left. I saw one, someone purchased one yesterday. Um, and they'll all be per, um, sent out as soon as um, they become available. So um, any Vicky Booten fans will know that it is going to be an amazing kit. 
Okay, so you saw that I just popped that little title on there. Um, and now doing this one, I've got a four by four photograph. I've been waffling on for an hour now, guys. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the one with the art foamy. Now this is actually dried up looking really awesome because the other colors uh, have all come through and because the background was a little damp, it is looking pretty amazing. So my photograph will go there. I think that, um, again, it's going to need a some black doodling and we'll just do it like that. Um, you can also run it through the sewing machine. A stitched edge along here would look amazing. Um, really, really nice. So popping that onto there and just giving it a little bit of a curly squiggle because that's how I roll. Right, now my photo will go there. So let's just whack that on. Another bit of cardboard. Sorry if anybody's making any comments. I'm not actually reading them because I'm concentrating on trying not to take up your entire day. Um, you know what I might do? I've got some 49 and market mix and match die cut bits. I think I might use a frame. So these are the stitched frames. Now, although the color isn't good, I'm going to color it with oxides. I think that's a splendid idea. So I'll do that in a moment. I'll pop this on first. Can anyone see where I put my tape? Stop looking, found it. Tape, tape, tape. I swear I spend more time after class cleaning up from the previous class than I do actually teaching a little a little class. Gotta love that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that bit, hang on. Okay, I've got that exposed, I've got to commit to it. So I also have here some paper rose paper. So these are the papers that I've designed for paper rose. And I want to find something in a blue to back or a green to back my photo with. And I've picked up the wrong pack because there's nothing in there that colour. Of course there's not. Ooh, hang on. So these are the papers in the um, Artie Love paper collection. I hand painted all of these and we turned them into pattern papers. I absolutely love the heck out of them. That's a good color. See how that's got my handwriting on it? Love it. There's some more. Ooh, that might be a bit nice with it too. So the paper rose papers are also on special. Get on it. All right, let's do this. So when I mat a photo, I do it from the photo down. So no matter how I create, I will do this. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. <coughs> excuse me. And I am not a fussy person for getting things straight. I don't, it does not phase me at all um, on how straight my paper is. Like I said before, because I'm creating it for me. Um, I'm just going to dip that in the big dob of glue that I've got sitting on my desk there. Okay, no, 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 I'm pretty happy with it just like that actually.
bit of cardboard. So what's everybody doing while I am creating? Like, surely you can't, someone's got to be ironing or, nobody irons, who am I kidding? Um, cooking or, nah, nobody cooks, who am I kidding? Creating, is anybody creating while we're doing this? Anybody want to put a photo up? Hello, Karen, how are you? Um, because I've been on here for what, an hour and five minutes, hour and ten minutes, so surely you guys haven't been sitting there. You can drink a bottle of wine in that time. Yes, actually, a Vicky Boone butterfly would be beautiful on this page, but I'm not going to open one up. I will get a packet of them if I've got one floating around. Um, I'm not going to open them up because I don't have one. Oh, patchworking. Very nice. Oh, you mean this one? I could use that. Um, okay, I'm going to pop these frames on. Um, they're nice, but they're a bit, you know, I don't, they're a bit bland. Uh, so let's make them not bland. Um, I have you sitting on the bench. Thanks, Joanne. Love being perched on a bench, love. Totally my thing. All right. That one might be okay, actually, that little butterfly. The colour's not quite right, um, but that's okay. So what these 49 and Market stitched frames are actually stitched. Can you see that? Sorry about my crusty fingers, but they are actually stitched. So they are really, really nice. So I'm adding, making a puddle with my Distress Oxides and I'm just going to swipe through. And that's colouring the fabric of the, sorry, the cotton on the frame as well as the paper. And I don't want the whole thing totally covered because that would be boring. But maybe I'll also add a bit of... No. See, now I turned all the labels around. I can't see them. Cracked pistachio was the big no because I put that down before. Where's that? Oh. Voila. Evergreen, no, lucky clover. So that's super green, but what I want to do is mix it with a little of that other one that we had there before. And that is going to match our background a little better. Right, so oops, there we go. So what's happened is I've just rolled the paper towel over it and it hasn't, and it's left the colour sitting in the cotton and that's what I, the look I was after. I didn't want to make it super dark. I just wanted the colour to be, for it to not be, a boring tone that 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 it started that natural tone that it started off with. So, um, snip, snip, tuck. Whoops. Snip and tuck in there. Snip and tuck in here.
perfect, perfect, because everything's about the photo, so I'm framing the photo, because that's what scrapbooking is about. It's about my photo, and because I was too lazy to go and find a photo, you just have to pretend that there's one there. Um, yes, I am gonna glue that on, but I'm not at the moment. Um, I, this is really cute, so I can pop that down somewhere, and I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna pick it up, and it's gonna fall out, and then I'm gonna say, Shit, I should have glued that. Glue. 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 And... Yep, that'll do. Okay, so let's think about these beautiful storyteller story teller words um and i really quite like happy soul so these are a, a beautiful little vinyl a vinyl sticker um i love these i'm such a huge fan of this product you'll notice that i've just uh, i've started stocking more alphas and stickers and bits and pieces like that in my store um and hey if there's anything that you want to see me actually stock flick me a message um i could i could trust me i could buy all the things um i have got lots of things still on the way lots of products coming in at the moment um And, oh, that colour's working out okay. Lots of products on the way in. Lots of, um, plenty of options. Um, I will be very shortly having a delivery of Alter New. Stamps, dies, bits and pieces coming in. Um, I don't want that there at all, actually. Let's pop that up there. So I'm looking at getting things in the other stores, you know, something something a little bit unique. That doesn't, ha you know, we don't all want exactly the same things in. That's the one I want there. Um, this one just isn't quite the right colour, you know. Well, maybe it is. You know what? Stuff it. Let's stick it on there. Perfecto. Okay. So, building layers underneath my photo. The stitched frames now have a lovely little green tinge to them to go with the background. We created our background on that one and stamped it and doodled it. I will be adding some black doodling to this area because it needs to match in with everything else. So, lovely. All right, and last but not least, this guy here, we're gonna snip this off. And I will snip it again when I snip that barcode off. And I am ridiculously impressed about how bloody good that looks. Bonus bug. Um, photo. Photo, photo, photo. Where's my pretend? Here we go. So the, side, the photograph on this one will probably be, again, a... I mean, this here is a standard 6x4, but... I never use a standard 6x4. I always cut it down to at least 5x4 or something like that, simply because there's always bits and pieces that just don't need to be in the photo. So if I have a photo going here, like that, um, and then I can add a sentiment, there's some really lovely little yellow elements on this as well that I want to use. So I'll finish this layout off, um, off camera and post a photo 
Um, I might not finish this one tonight. I might work on this one a little bit longer. I have a bit of an idea and I want to print a photograph. Um, so happy days. So what I'm going to do just to finish off, girls, is, um, and gentlemen, if there's any left, I don't know. Um, as I'll just go back and explain the three projects that I have just created in the last hour and 15 minutes, three scrapbook pages. So I masked off a piece of marshmallow cardstock, first of all. And then I used the Distress Oxides and a piece of clear acetate to smush on the colour. So we put the Distress Oxide onto the plastic added some water and smushed that on. So that is how our color came onto the page. So with this one, we I used the paper rose dye and placed that over the top. And it is a six by four dye that I joined up. And you only notice it really when I point it out because I've trimmed off a couple of little bits to make it um, flow a little better. This is the one that we did with the, uh, with the greens in the background. So again, I masked it off and then um, I used the Art Foamy Foam Stamp with the Distress Oxide straight onto the foam stamp and stamped this image in the background. Uh, the stitched frames, we added some colour to that. We use the paper rose papers in the background uh, because they are designed for card makers and for scrapbookers exactly for this purpose because I did that. Um, the storyteller alphas um, and words, we use those there. And then on the other page, which is this one, which is now my favourite considering I shagged it up, um, we masked it off from here to there. We smushed our colour through the middle. Then we used the Scrap Effects Happy Houses. These are the mini Happy Houses, um, which are the rice papers. Popped a little bit of white behind them. I foam mounted those onto there. There is some stamping on the back. So the stamping is done with the Scrap Effects foam stamps. And everything has been done with Distress Oxides um, and then the alphabet. So hopefully, um, I'll take some photos of what I've done here and put them straight up online so you can have a look. And I'll link up the products that I've used as I always do. Um, and as I was saying before, for those of you who have already um, placed an order with me over the weekend, thank you, over the week, thank you very much. You can... Add to your order by selecting no judgment at the checkout, which means that you pay one cent to have your order added to the previous order. Um, then that way you don't have to pay postage more than once. Um, other than that, guys, thank you very, very much for sticking it out. Um, I may or may not pop back a little bit later on tonight for a little impromptu art journaling session. I'm going to rehydrate, um, decide if I'm going to have a glass of wine or not. Uh, Trev's watching the footy. I might go and hang out with him for 10 minutes because I haven't seen him today. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, thank you for watching. Um, Distress Oxides are going to be on special for... A few more hours yet at 15% off so um, they will be on special until I go to bed so you've got a couple of hours up your sleeve at this stage um, but thanks guys um, fantastic to hang out with you again and uh, wash your hands kiss your kids get out in the, in the fresh air get some vitamin D and I will chat to you all soon